Cervical cancer contributes to almost 80% of maternal deaths in the world. And uh, if we talk of the cervical cancer, this uh, arises from the cells that grow uncontrollably and uh, multiply and also mutate to form cancerous cells and this one normally attacks uh, the cervix. So today's video we want to talk about malignant tumors of the cervix that is cancer of the cervix and how they present that is signs and symptoms and eventually risk factors. In part two we'll be talking about diagnosis and eventually management plus prevention. Welcome again and if you have not subscribed to this channel hit the notification bell return subscribe turn it on for more videos that we'll post. Now uh, about 10% of cancers that affect uh, the cervix are called adenocarcinomas and they normally affect the endocervix. But 90% of cancers are squamous cell carcinomas affecting ectocervix. And these are malignant tumors that grow uncontrollably affecting the cervix can, and even can spread to other parts of the body. We call this metastasis. Now, cancer normally takes a very, very long time uh, to develop and uh, the major cause of this is a viral disease. Uh, this virus called human papilloma virus. I had made a video about human papilloma virus and if you have not watched that video, kindly take, uh, take a step of faith and click that link that appears up here or even the description below. I will leave a link that uh, explains about human papilloma virus. In fact, uh, there are very many strains of human papilloma virus that uh, cause cancers, but type 16 and 18 are the more virulent type that virulent strain, sorry, that normally cause uh, cervical cancers. And this one normally takes a longer period of time for it to manifest in human beings. Normally it takes around 10 to 20 years so that symptoms and signs can be seen in uh, women. And uh, majorly uh, women will present with uh, pervaginal bleeding, uh, bleeding even between the periods or even after menopause. There might be vaginal discharge and also what we call dyspareunia, that is pain while having intercourse or pain while having coitus. The major three are the most basic ones that forms and if we see this over a period of time, uh, we might uh, be highly thinking of uh, cervical cancers. Of course, there is an advanced stage when somebody can have unexplained weight loss, heavy bleeding, uh, loss of appetite, uh, sweating, uh, some have weak bones, breakage of bones, that now when the cancer is now advanced and when it, it spreads to various uh, organs, then it might present with uh, uh, case by case if it, it, it affects the bladder, pain while passing urine, uh, even blood while pass passing urine when it affects the rectum. You can even have a vesicle vaginal fistula that is communication between the rectum, the bladder, and the anus. And sometimes uh, in advanced stage, uh, a woman can be able uh, to pass urine via anus or vice versa. So uh, cervical cancer, we must take it serious uh, because it forms a larger percentage of those who are suffering in this. One of the risk factors of uh, cancer of the cervix is uh, brought about by human papilloma virus as a cause and as a risk factors. We say that uh, many sexual partners has a high chance of uh, making one person to contract human papilloma virus thereby within a period of time uh, this one will form cancerous cells in the cervix. So many sexual partners really contribute to high number of uh, uh, cancer of the cervix in female. And again, when you have uh, 
early sexual intercourse at a tender age is also a contributing factor uh, particularly uh, females who normally start having sexual intercourse in their teens they are prone of developing invasive cancer of the cervix caused by human papilloma virus they are having a high risk of developing this particular disease and again when you are uh, sexually active you may contract STIs such as chlamydia tricomatis uh, you may get gonorrhea or even syphilis and HIV and this normally play a very very important role in the risk factors of developing uh, cancer of the cervix women who are undergoing chemotherapy or undergoing any forms of cancer treatment apart from cancer of the cervix uh, they are prone uh, to develop what we call low immunity and when you develop low immunity you are at high risk of uh, getting uh, this particular cancer of the cervix over a period of time and we normally say that uh, smoking is contraindicated in almost every uh, kind of uh, disease and uh, smoking normally uh, causes uh, mutation and brings about uh, squamous cell carcinomas and this one might also affect uh, the cervix thereby causing what we call cervical cancer and again we should be able to know that uh, uh, when you are using oral contraceptives uh, it is said that you are at a high risk and in fact it is documented that five to nine years are uh, of use of uh, oral contraceptives you have times three fold of developing invasive cancer of the cervix and those who have used this particular oral contraceptive for more than 10 years then they are at four times full of developing what we call uh, cancer of the cervix and this one you might uh, you must note this that uh, you only develop this for those who had had a human papilloma virus or those who have suffered from human papilloma virus it is not just uh, when you use uh, oral contraceptive then it is a rule of thumb that you must develop cancer of the cervix no we peg this for those who had had uh, human papilloma virus or even even pregnancy multiple pregnancy also contributing this and also we tie this for those who had suffered from uh, a human papilloma virus and we say that if you are carrying if you've, uh, you've delivered around seven pregnancy plus you are at risk of developing cancer of the cervix times four fold of uh, the risk of cancer of the cervix and when you have two to uh, three children uh, you have uh, uh, one to two children you have two to three times risk of developing cancer of the cervix so let's note that uh, this cancer of the cervix normally revolved around human papilloma virus the last video we are going to talk about diagnosis screening management and event prevention kindly get glued uh, for we are going to do this in the next video that is part two of cancer of the cervix if you have not subscribed to this channel kindly hit the notification bell written subscribe turn it on for more videos that we pull and for our returning subscribers we are very much grateful for the work that you have been doing to this channel and i'm very very happy because uh, the channel is growing slowly kindly share this video with your friends and colleagues muchas gracias